Hello, everybody. My name is Mythical Kama, and today I'm going to be discussing with you the topic about Scylla's immortality and how I think it might work. Um, but first, we have to talk about her parents, how she became a monster, the people who have actually killed Scylla before, and then we can get to the immortality part. So the first topic is her parents. Scylla has actually a lot of parents. Um, it seems like none of the writers could actually agree on who exactly Scylla's parents were. There, um, there's actually quite a bit. And please keep in mind while I'm reading these names off that I, they're going to be horribly mispronounced. I'm going to put the spellings on the screens and also keep in mind that since they're both Greek and Roman, there's technically two different spellings of each name. So first we have what's in the Odyssey, the Oda's accounts of it, Scylla, is her mother, which is Cuteasis. There was never a father mentioned, but the oldest father that we know of, which is the main father we're going to be focusing on, just like she is the main mother that we're going to be focusing on, is Vokuhi. Now, second, now, secondary mothers and thirdary mothers are Hikiti and Inchidia. Then the rest of the fathers that have popped up throughout many other mythologies are Fedorius, Tyrrhenius, which is another one of the oldest fathers, by the way, and Tywina. That is all her mothers and fathers, with the two that we're focusing on being Kitius and E. Now that we have talked about Scylla's parents and the two main focus that we're going to be focusing on, for her parents at least, which is Kritiesi and Fokuhi, I'm going to put the spellings up during the entire thing section where I'm talking about the parents, we can move on to how she became a monster. One of the ways was she was just born about, born with it. And that's the way with her mo with one of her mothers, which is a monster. Most of them are gods or gods, but one of them is a monster. And that's how one of them, she was born a monster. Okay? And um, then the other two ways are two different myths about how she was cursed to be a monster because of jealousy. Basically, the first myth goes as follows. Poseidon was attracted to Scylla's beauty. So attracted that it caught a maid. I'm gonna pronounce the name here. Ampithirti. Jealous. So jealous, in fact, that she cursed Scylla. How she did this was she basically poisoned Scylla's water while she was bathing in it, turning her into the monster we know. The second myth about how Scylla became a monster is. Uh, really similar to the first, except with different characters. And, in fact, one of the characters does fall in love with Scylla, and is not just attracted to the beauty. The person that falls in love with Scylla is... Uh, I'm gonna pronounce the name here, so I let, give, let me read this. Gullusus. He fell in love with Scylla, but Scylla refused him. So Gullusus went to Cyrus to ask Cyrus to make a love potion. But while there... Cyrus became attracted to Galusius, so attracted that she became jealous of Scylla, and cursed Scylla basically the same way that the other person did. They cursed Scylla's bathing water, transforming her into the monster we know. Now that we talked about how she became a monster, we can talk about how she has died. Basically, the first way she has died is a alternative ending to the second way she became a monster. Instead of Cerse cursing Scylla from her jealousy, she simply just, well, kills Scylla instead. To which then Glacius takes Scylla's body to Crystal Palace, or I think that's how you, I think that's Palace. Um... To which she stays there, dead, for about a thousand years. And then she was resurrected by... 
Ah, lovely name. In end emoriumus. <laughs> Wrong spelling. Um, to which then she, Scylla, and he, Galusius, are united. And I don't think Scylla actually becomes a monster in this one. I think she just they get married. I think in that one. The second way Scylla's died is actually when she was a monster. While Hercules was traveling to Sicily, he ran into Scylla, and then proceeded to slay Scylla. Then Scylla's father, Borquihi, applied, applied flaming torches to her body, and which those restored her back to life, resurrecting her again. Now comes the also main focus of this video, Scylla's immortality. When we look into mythology, it tends to be that immortals are able to die. They just live forever unless killed off. Let's just call them false immortals because I like the term true immortals for immortals that never die. So in mythology, immortals die if they're killed. As we've seen, Scylla's been killed twice and resurrected twice, in two different ways. So, let us get into how she is basically immortal. I already discussed how she basically lives forever unless killed, but it seems like she has a different feature that you don't see in many immortals, which is when Scylla is killed off, I hit my mic, um, she can be resurrected by an outside force, say her father or somebody else. So long as that is the case, then we can assume that about almost all other immortals in Greek mythology, that they can be killed off and resurrected. With that talked about, we still have to keep in mind one very important thing. Even another immortal fears Scylla according to um, the time when the Odyssey was happening. Because of how powerful she was, she struck fear into just about anybody. Even some gods. And also, another side topic is, um, since almost all the parents that are, um, Scylla's parents that I discussed earlier in this video are gods, technically, even though they call her a sea nymph, she is a god. Or goddess, my bad. So technically, Scylla is a goddess. <laughs> the more you know. Anyways, I'll leave you to, um, this one last point. Now that you know how the immortality works, with how Scylla functions and all of that, and basically how I believe Scylla's immortality functions, where she can live forever unless something kills her, to which then something like an outside force can resurrect her. Now that you know that, I'll leave you with one question. Would you take Scylla's place? Would you become and take her mortality? Would you do that? I'm actually really quite curious. How many people would take that type of immortality? Where you could live forever unless you're killed, but you could still be resurrected by an outside force. And since we don't really have anything, let's just say that outside force, for something powerful like a god, or how ancient people saw gods, Let's call that outside force, say, a lightning bolt or anything equivalent to that. So, would you take Scylla's immortality, or would you just live your life how it is now? I am curious. And I hope you all have a lovely, lovely day.